All right, welcome back and Merry Christmas to everybody. It's the segment you absolutely have to hear, and even on Christmas Eve, let's fire it up right now with the all-knowing Rick Venturi on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. He's brought to you by the District Tap. You can see everything, see, hear, and understand everything at Colts.com on First Down with Rick Venturi and the Colts mobile app. Each and every week with offense, defense, and keys to the game, a lot of which, what he discussed last week, came to fruition yesterday in that game and that come-from-behind win by uh, by the Colts over the Giants, and Rick joins us right now. Where do we begin on that game yesterday? Because I, was it the fiery halftime conversation? I, here, here's Maybe here's where I'll start here, Rick. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a team in my life come out as late from the half as they did because Rigo was, like, motioning to, hey, we got to have people out here. Hey, they, they, um, they were all still getting on the field when the, the clock was rolling, and some were still coming out of the tunnel. That was kind of incredible. Well, there's no doubt about that. And I was like, oh, my God, usually, usually that means maybe we're going to come out here flat. But whatever they did, you know, Frank, uh, Andrew, you know, whatever's been reported, uh, you know, we probably need to do that next week to start the game. We probably need to do it in the locker room to start it because there's no question about it. It was a crazy performance yesterday. Uneven, you know, wouldn't do it, uh, wouldn't do it the, right, the right term. But – uh, the good news for us, and this hasn't always been this way the last few years, the last few years it's been just the opposite, but, uh, you know, it's a good thing we didn't play seven innings yesterday. Yeah. We played nine, and, uh, man, when it came to uh, to finish in the game, uh, we did. I mean, we did it in, in every way possible, um, even though we had terrible struggles, really, for three quarters. I mean, absolutely amazing. Um, and, you know, but in the end of the day, uh, 28, 27 looks like 45 to nothing today. And, and it just doesn't get better than this. Um, you know, a couple of my alumni associations had great days yesterday, the Colts yep. and then my saints down in new Orleans, they not only helped themselves, but they certainly opened the door for us in a, in a real thriller down there. So it just, John, it doesn't get better than this, uh, you know, going into this 17 week, 17th week, um, you know, with uh, with it all on the line, um, basically coming back from that awful one in five start, um, even a little slow spot in the middle, but just you know coming on like this, and uh, you know getting in position uh, to do this against a team that you know has never beaten Andrew Luck, who you know as I told Tony earlier, they they tend to play really good against everybody, but they just don't seem to really match up well against the Colts. They really don't. You know, their their secondary has always struggled terribly with T.Y. Um, you know, their running game, which keeps them alive on offense, you know, is something that we've been able to stop. It's, you know, now it's it's almost historical. I mean, we're going to, you know, if we do a good job this Sunday, you know, we're going to do something special with the rush defense. So, you know, I mean, it's just we're a good matchup. you got to go down and play. It's all on the line. Uh, I mean, so many things can happen, uh, you know, right down to the effect that you could you you could not only be the wild card team, you could be the division champion by the end of Sunday night, and obviously make it a flex game, uh, you know, prime time, just makes it great. You know, I I really had some thoughts yesterday. I it was really as I as I kind of ended it there. Uh, as much as we've talked about the rebuild, which has been phenomenal, there's no question about it. Uh, the, the the change in personnel over the last two years, and particularly the the change this year with the with the rookies playing so well. But I I just thought for a moment, and I said, you know, we all ought to be thankful for that two twelve two twelve draft today because you know the Andrew Luck thing, you know, despite a tough yep. first half, an awful interception. Although we saw Brady do the same thing last week in the fourth quarter against Pittsburgh in the same spot. And I was like, what in the world is that? I think I texted you mm-hmm. like, what? And I didn't say what in the world was that? You know, I was like, oh, my God. But then, you know, to come back and score 21 points, um, you know, to take us on that, his 24th comeback, fourth quarter overtime wins at the buzzer, um, you know, including that last drive, that 14-yard run that he just makes look so easy. And yet it separates him from everybody else and, you know, the idea that, you know, I, I just don't think we've appreciated Hilton enough. And I think what's happened is in this offense with Frank, there's been so much more diversity as well as, you know, as we're complimenting with people, 
you know, I hope Ebron can make it back. I hope that thing isn't isn't a tough thing. But even there, Frank made some compensations and used, uh, you know, used uh, uh, Inman and and those guys very much like you would use a tight end. To be honest with you, he almost made that third wide like a tight end. But you know that and the offensive line protection. But I mean, Ty makes two great plays again. And Andrew, I call him 40 cents yesterday because he threw four dimes in there. I mean, really dimes. He threw that, he threw that fade to Hilton, which is just unbelievable. The over route to Hilton. Um, he threw that big seam down against cover two to Inman right down in the middle. That was a dime. And then the other throw that was great as a good play, um, you know, by Hines was that fade on the sidelines. I mean, those are. Those are those are elite quarterback yep. <laughs> moments, as well as taking us down there. So you know, I felt really good about that. You know, I thought, you know, I, I was afraid. I thought the irony of this thing was the house that Manning built <laughs> was going to be the house that Eli Manning restored yesterday because he really had a tremendous day without a lot around him. It was kind of like Barkley in the pips, and I think. That's what was probably so surprising, and I do take my hat off to Pat Shermer. I thought he did a terrific job of, you know, without a lot of talent coming in here and really, you know, pretty much taking us to school, you know, with 304 yards, 180 in the first half passing, and, you know, I mean, having a really good day. But in the end, our resilience was there on defense as well because the biggest the biggest single issue in that game is that we had that stop in the red zone you know we can we can talk about the end but the end was going to happen that we'll give that to sanchez sanchez that was that was hero exactly he lays it down in there milton catches it on the three you ain't you don't have with that team you it was like miami that day this game was a lot like the miami game and when Miami got backed up in there at the end, I, I turned to my son. I said, it's over because they they are not getting out of here with that noise. And you saw it. They, they came apart at the seams back in there. But, you know, I thought I thought that red zone stop was amazing. And the big, the number one guy was our, was our guy that I've been talking about was Autry. I mean, Autry makes the – they get to second and two on that first play. Then they try to zone it again. He comes in that double A. He comes in that A gap and throws him for a loss. And then the bootleg, even though the pressure inevitably comes um, from Lewis, but really the really the stop was two things. It was coverage, uh, but then Autry did a great job on that boot pass. He stalled right now. He got right in Manning's face. Manning had nowhere to go. He, had, he tried to turn, you know, because basically it was covered, and Autry had him in his sights, so he turned and held it, and by that time, Lewis came running from the other side. But that was a terrific stop, because if that game there goes 31-21, at that point, two scores may be a little bit too much to have. So, you know, that Sanchez and, you know, 21 points in the second half, you know, really does show the resilience. And, uh, you know, again, Again, this is why I do believe that, you know, even though, you know, we won one yesterday without our fastball. We went to our curves, change-ups, and won the game, and that's kind of the mark of a good team. And, you know, we got to get this thing under the belt because I think we can do damage the rest of the way. I really do. It's uh, Rick Venturi. He's brought to you by the District Tap on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Yeah, we were going back and forth. Sanchez deserves so much credit for burying them. And then I will say this. There are a lot of people, at least in the Twitter sphere or in social media that were against him you know giving that up right then and right there as that turned out that was the absolute correct decision by the head coach absolutely and i thought so at the time because what what happened was is that you know that the giants were doing a really good job all day i mean they were doing things they were moving our zones i can get into all the and and the thing is we better we better look at that because everybody's going to look at that now that's going to be a model again for attacking us because that was like 400 yards um, you know, of offense there. And, you know, w- w- if it's not for the 28 points, we don't win it. Yep. But, um, you know, uh, I-, I just knew that if you get a team that doesn't have skill, it was the same way with Miami, you get them backed up first in 96, and then when they have that tight lead, they just don't want to make a mistake. That's the toughest position a coach can be in. And he actually did try to throw it, but they had the holding penalty. You know, and the noise, they jumped off sides. It's just – the, the 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 crowd meant means so much 
in that backed up situation, to be honest with you. And it was just, it, it was just really good. So Rick Venturi, he's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. We also discussed this, and it didn't happen, and I'm glad they didn't have to do it. And, in fact, I'm glad just we didn't have to really talk about it other than now. But was there ever the sense when they got, you know, first and, and goal after the penalty and, and you've got, I don't know, around a minute or so, and you got the Giants with one timeout to maybe take a knee and force them to take that timeout right there? Did that ever cross your mind? It's funny that you said that, and you texted me right on the spot. So I know you were thinking about that. And I said, I don't think I could probably do that. Yeah. Although I had turned to my son with a minute to go, and I said, it'd almost be better if they stopped us one play here and walked that clock down. I because it's almost better for them just to let them go ahead and score. Yeah, yeah. it probably would have been. Yeah. And then Barkley made a big mistake by not getting out of bounds on that first play. He, yeah. he, he made a – when they had the ball, that was a huge mistake mentally to not get out of bounds because that eight clock – and you're right, they may, may have been better off to let us score – um, you know, but that was an RPO. That was kind of a side adjustment. Uh, it's an interesting one. You have a zone run called, but you have a pick play tied in with it. And, uh, you know, and I do think this, John, here, here's the one thing I, I do think, and, I, and I, this is why I don't think I'd take the knee. When you, if you try, you've seen so many goal line stands that are run, run, pass, don't make it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think when you, if you're going to throw the football in that situation, throw it on first down. And don't get in that real heavy, tight formation jumbo where they can put 11 guys on the line of scrimmage. That's, that would have been the only way the Giants could have stopped us is if we'd have put all those big guy bodies in there and it would have brought 11 of them right up and they might have beat us with numbers. And I've always believed that if you're going to if you're gonna score on the goal line – if you're going to take a shot from inside the five, throw it on first down. Don't wait till third down. Don't wait till fourth down. You know what I mean? Just go on ahead and throw it right off the bat because that's when you'll catch them more in a run, run mentality. You know, they caught us on that bootleg right off the bat. I mean, they, you know, they, they, they caught Odom there uh, when they hit their tight end in the flat because he was thinking run all the way, and they came out with that little boot. They really – our linebackers, I think we. There's no question. We really missed Walker, yeah. and I think we really missed Gathers. I, we were confused. I mean, several times we didn't get lined up. I thought our linebackers on pass coverage, including um, including uh, Leonard, until the very last play, that he ends up in the middle and ends up running that vertical seam, um, and they can't. And Eli shouldn't have really thrown it, but he, he tried. At that point, I think he thought, I'm not going to methodically get it down. Let's just take a shot. But our linebackers were really lost most of the day on the pass coverage. We moved them. You know, they moved them with play action. They moved them with the boots. And I think they did a lot of that to get away from those two inside guys, Autry and Hunt, you know, and the more I thought about it. Because it wasn't like really a bootleg where you're going to get out there and run with a Deshaun Watson or a Mariota. It's really more of a move the pocket but there's a little misdirection, and, and, you know, they just had guys wide open. I mean, just all day in those creases. This looked more like, you know, that stretch from New England through, um, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, we had a four-game stretch, New England and and uh, the Raiders and the Jets, and then we had, oh, and then Jacksonville won, where, you know, we just they just, just shredded us, you know, with short possession passes. And so – you know, again, we got to make sure that we look at that because going forward, everybody's going to look at it. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. There's there's so much to get into yesterday because it was it was like many games in just one game, and especially yeah. Yeah. a bad part about it in that that first half. What I mean, they couldn't get a sustained drive. They being the Colts most no. of the time, and they could not get the Giants off the field to the tune yeah. where Eli and as you mentioned earlier, Shermer, they were just picking that defense apart. Was that more about how how you know Walker? was missing there you know how they were missing gathers is that just more about what the Giants had well, devised I think they did a really good job and I, you know I've always I've always sang Pat Schirmer's pre, uh, uh, you know his praises I don't think he's ever had a good job I think he's had to, I think he's you know coached the Christians against the Lions his whole career but I saw him in St. Louis as an offensive coordinator and he was twice the coordinator that Josh McDaniels was the next year with basically the same team. And he got – that's the one year that Sam Bradford had a great rookie year. And so I watched him every day. And I just think that he, he basically took his players 
He didn't have Beckham. He didn't have the threat. So, you know, and I think I said that to you Sunday morning. I said, look for those tight ends to play a big role. And I had done a big thing on Ingram. Ingram is really an emerging star. And, boy, we weren't ready for him at all, at all. The other thing they did a really good job of, I thought of, instead of trying to run it inside, the one time they did on the on the red zone is when they killed themselves. They ran those pitches. You know, they ran a little bit more toss. And even though it wasn't, you know, they never broke us, I mean, because we're a good run defense team. But they kind of stayed away that way. They stayed away from those losses to Autry and, uh, until that red zone play in Hunt. And then they got on the edge with, um, with those uh, misdirection plays to the tight end. Those were big plays. I mean, they got big gains from Ingram coming back against the grain. Like I said, they had our linebackers befuddled the whole game. Yeah, it, think about this, too. I mean, it was a, a couple of weeks with the Colts and Autry. They were going crazy getting after the quarterback. And then no sacks, and I think maybe a pressure or two, if that. It was it was well, a pretty that, good game for the you, Giants' offensive line, as it seemed. The thing that you have to do against our defense and teams that don't do this, and that's why, this is why I think we match up so well with Tennessee. Tennessee comes out, you know, they're, they're, they're real low in offense. You know, they're 26th in offense, 20, 26th in scoring, 29th in rushing, I mean, I mean 29th in uh, passing. But in 26th in sacks, I mean, those are bottom feeder numbers, but they're fifth in rushing. But the thing about it is they come out there and they try to, and, they, and I think they've been smart. They've gone back to Henry as the primary back, and they said, okay, we're going to pound you, and then we're going to, then Mariota's play action and everything, and Mariota's very problematic. He never came back in that game Saturday after, he, after, that, after that elbow went numb on him again. But, you know, their theory was, you know, we're going to get back. We're, we're trying to play too much finesse. Let's get back to play defense, hammer you with Henry, run the football, let Mariota run his Saturday plays, his college plays, and when he does throw, get him on the move or get him play action. Because I'm going to tell you what, he's not very good in the pocket. I, I'm just going to tell you, I, I, he has not come very far. And then, you know, Gabbard, who filled in for one game, but he, you know, Gabbard is Gabbard. I mean, he's the guy that's never really done it. So, you know, the, the biggest thing with them is, well, like we did in the first game, you've got to establish dominance early. You get ahead of them in the count, and all their, every bit of their strong suits go to pot. And if you can make them play football out of the pocket, you know, I think their quarterbacks fold up. They don't have a great receiver core. And then their offensive line, and particularly now that Conklin's out on the right side, that's a big loss for them. So they are really vulnerable. They don't pick up blitzes. We showed the way on that. That's kind of got us started on defense. I talked about that last week in in, re, in retrospect on how we've improved, yep. and it started in the Tennessee game, and they've been vulnerable ever since because they just don't, you know, they're just not a great drop back team. They're not built for that. So establishing the lead is always important, but on this team, it's tremendously important. So Rick Cherry, he's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline, brought to you by the District Tap every Monday after 5 right here. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas to everybody as we are, are coming at you here with a little Colts recap of the Giants and preview coming up here. You, you mentioned uh, Evan Ingram as well was basically uncontrollable the entire yeah. game. Um, now, on the other hand, you look at the Colts going into this game, you got a concussion protocol for Eric Ebron, which is a tremendous deal as they prep for Nashville coming up on Sunday night. No, it's a big deal. Wouldn't you like to have Swope right now this oh, week? I mean, it's not? really too bad that we couldn't have. And I understand it. I'm not being critical. It's just really too bad we couldn't have held on to him because he's the next best thing when you talk about hybrid football, when you talk about two tight ends that can get in there and uh, really make a difference because basically you want Allie Cox to do exactly what he's doing. You want him to be that edge tight end, you know, do enough blocking to keep you alive and do some receiving. What I thought Frank did a good job, and I think this is how you go, and I think this is good against Tennessee anyway, is I, I see us maybe a little bit more three wide receivers uh, or, you know, when Hewitt's in the game, use Hewitt at that second tight end, but then you're – then you're really running the ball. You're running the whams inside. And I, I think the more, the more people you bring in close to the box, you make Tennessee a better team. I've studied them now every single game 
for two years, and I, I believe they really struggle with Nick, what I call sub runs. In other words, when you get in your substitute personnel, you get in three wide receivers. I mean, they'll go nickel immediately. Matter of fact, they went nickel against us when we had the two tight ends. They went nickel because of Ebron, and I thought it was the greatest thing in the world because it Logan Ryan, who's gone, he's out for the season, but he went inside, and then you have Butler – and um, uh, you, ha- you have Butler and the other guy on the other side, Jackson, who to me are real liabilities. They don't, I know they don't think so, but that's why they get smoked every time they play us. Um, but more importantly, I don't think they stop the run nearly as well in their, run- in their sub-defenses. Now, where their sub-defenses are really good, and you have to be alert for them, and when my videos come out, you're going to see all this because I've got a great tape on all these things uh, you know, when, when they come out on Thursday, but basically their best, the best part of their def- the best part of their defense is third down and red zone. And the reason third down is good. And you've seen it, John, you've been around here long enough and you've watched it. And it's, it's the same, the same guy. It's Dean Pease. They've been there over the years and, and Vrabel before him, they, they stand all those guys up. I call it radar. Everybody's standing up along the line. Sometimes it's three, Sometimes it's four, and then they blitz all over. And the one thing that we did a poor job of offensively Sunday was blitz pickup. I mean, we our offensive line actually blocked pretty well against four-man rush. Uh, they got us with two Tom games on the right side on the two guys on on Haig and uh, and Smitty. They got pressure with two uh, two text games with the tackle in the end. But other than that. We actually protected their regular defense as well, but we really we got smoked with one exception on the blitz. Uh, our backs either missed the p- pickup. One time, I, I thought one time Mac did a really good job, but then you know he missed one. You know the the Davis one time he blocked him, tried to cut him. Davis got off the ground, got the hit, and then one time we just didn't turn back fast enough. But the vulnerability we showed there was that if you come from the second level, not the linebacker level, they brought those guys late, those safeties from deep. And when they came from late, I mean, we really we really struggled. I mean, that's what kept the Giants in the game defensively because they can't play defense. But it kept them in the game, and I think you've got to be aware of this because this is the other reason you don't want to get behind an account is because the Titans do a great job with this radar package. And, you know, they'll bring the nickel. They'll bring Sims, who's now replaced Ryan's. You know, they'll bring the Bayard kid from all over. So, I mean, we really have to shore that up. Again, this is, remember, this is a copycat league from a science standpoint. And, you know, guys at this stage are looking for every advantage they can get. And I obviously uh, bring in guys from deeper and not showing it, not giving you any kind of blitz profile, really, really hurt us. So Rick Venturi with us. I tell you what, Rick, we're going to take a break and put you on hold, and we'll come back on the other side. But I want you to think about this. Life in a must-win situation without Jarrell Casey on the defensive side for the Titans. I want to get into that a little bit. And give me a jump ball here. Mariota, Gabbard, um, and even especially a dinged-up, an incredibly dinged-up Mariota. What maybe to expect offensively under center for the Titans. Is that all right? Yeah. We're going to put Rick on hold. We'll come back to Rick in just a second. Of course, we're on a Monday. It's Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to you. But we always got to get Rick in here. And before we hit a break and come back, I got to remind you of this. Universal Windows Direct, the place to go to keep you warm on the inside and looking great from the outside as well. To save on those energy costs and to make your house look fantastic. And right now, every window you buy from Universal Windows Direct, you get the next one free. And 0% financing for 30 six months. Some restrictions apply. These windows are great. I have them. You will love them. It's 317-547-2600. UniversalWindowsDirect.com. Like me, you'll be saying, I love my windows. Now, remember, you got my guys. If you like or maybe want to change into a new gig here. They're hiring window and door installers. Top pay benefits, substantial signing bonus with unlimited year-round work. Call Stephanie, 317-547-2600 a day, and tell him JMV sent you. Back with Rick next. 
Hey, welcome back. It's a Monday. It is Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to everybody. But we got to get our knowledge in, especially with a win in your end situation coming up on Sunday night football down in Nashville between the Colts and the Titans and the AFC South. And rejoining on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline, he's brought to you by District Tap. Rick Venturi is with us. All right, let's start with the loss of Jarrell Casey. He's been placed on IR. His season is over. The How major is that going into this win or go home scenario? Well, that's a huge deal. That's, I, I really believe that if you look at them over the years, you know, guys have come and, you know, come and gone, but he really is the heart and soul of that defense. I mean, he's a, he's a terrific run player. Uh, you know, he looks like a fire plug, but he's tremendously athletic. Uh, he'll go to the ball. He would be a good fit in this defense. He will hustle from sideline to sideline. He gives them a lot of diversity because he's a little bit of a hybrid. Doesn't look like it, but he, he's a little bit of a hybrid in that he can rush off the edge some, but he is really a dynamic rusher inside. He's got a great burst. Um, I'm going to put him in there regardless uh, until they definitely say no. Um, but, you know, also he can spin. He can do so many things. So, you know, that is a huge, huge replacement um, you know, I think it really re- weakens uh, the pass rush. I think, you know, they have struggled with the regular pass rush. They haven't gotten sacks. Iraq Post kind of been out. Morgan is, is okay. I, I like Landry, the young kid. I mean, they've got guys there, but Casey is the bell cow week in and week out, so that hurts. Uh, again, uh, you know, they're going to try to load up on that running game on first down. I, I, they have never, ever – and I'll be looking for this right off the bat. I'll text you right off the bat Sunday night. The first thing I'm going to be looking for is how are you going to try to handle Hilton because they have never, ever come up with what really what is a really good plan to do that. And if they do, the difference with this coaching staff is if they do, our guys know how to run the change-ups. They know how to make the adaptations. I thought yesterday they did a really good job after they lost Ebron what they ended up doing is using, you know, Rodgers in the slot. And I've always thought Rodgers is a good slot. If you don't have to play him outside, if you can play him in a slot, he'll give you good football. And they basically used Inman as an inside player. And Inman kind of, you know, he ran a lot of those tight end routes and the options, and even Pascal's good that way. So, I mean, those are the adjustments. And if they, you know, if they stretch their defense out and go to, and they, if they have to double him, then again, we have to run the ball. We have to run the ball well with Mac. We can't, you know, in other words, if, if they take Hilton away and make us play left-handed, then we've got to win left-handed. All right, you got a stinger if you're Marcus Mariota. He yeah. didn't come back out for the second half on Saturday against the Redskins. Blaine Gabbert took over. Uh, yeah. it, they're, they're, trying, they're going to try, I think, their best to get him out there on Sunday night without question. But he never really um, inspires me as a no. guy that plays well dinged up at all, Rick. Yeah, well, you know, and he's not a guy that plays well against us. Yeah. I, I mean, when you really look at it, I mean, Andrews, I think, isn't he – Aren't they O for Andrew Luck's career? I don't think they've ever beaten him, Tennessee. Um, but when I looked at Mariota, and I had great hopes for him coming out. Um, I thought he was, uh, you know, would be a lot like Andrew. Um, but the difference is this: uh, and if he plays, now he brings dimension to them, particularly with Henry, because with Henry pounding you, and Henry is a really good back. You know, he there's no question about it. They've been better with him running. But with Henry running and then Mariota running the zone reads and the options and all this, the quarterback sweeps, all the stuff that he does, that puts another dimension on the running game. That can stretch the running game a little bit. So there's an issue there. But for some reason, they've never really emphasized that against us, and I'm, I'm not even sure why. I'm not going to speculate it. I worry about it. I would be concerned with it, but they've never really done They'll They'll run one a game. Uh, but he really, I'm telling you what, if he is condensed in the pocket and you have decent coverage back there, he has never developed, in my opinion, the pocket accuracy and, more importantly, the pocket senses. Um, when we blitzed five a lot, which was really a good plan against us, and, and there, were no, there were no lanes to escape, um, he was befuddled. I mean, he was befuddled, and he will throw it away. I mean, he will, he, you know, because I, I, he, again, he has the mindset 
like Deshaun Watson, although nobody escapes like Deshaun Watson. You saw that Sunday. Yet I'm not putting anybody in that class when it comes to escape. But they, those guys think when they're boxed in, they think escape. They don't think I'm going to release this ball against the blitz. That's why they're susceptible to it because they think I'm going to make a play here, and they end up holding it and getting befuddled. You know, and you see the sacks, you see the sack fumbles, you see the interceptions, and I've just never seen the progress on that part of his game. That's why you, it's so important to shut down that run totally. Um, and then, of course, if he's not there, they're not going to do that with Gabbard. You, that's one thing you're not going to have to worry about. Now, if Gabbard is there, it's actually a little bit different kind of issue. I thought Gabbard – now, the game was over, so I, I think, you know, in some with the, our game was over with them in like five minutes in because we did exactly what you had to do. We went and smacked them in the face and never let them up, period. But <clears throat> when Gabbard came in, they actually looked better on offense. And what I would see, what I see with Gabbard is more of a Eli Manning plan, uh, you know, don't run that ball on first down. You know, nickel and dime us on first down. If you run, when you run the ball straight ahead on us on first down, you're second and ten, and then now our zone defense is really good. The teams that have killed us, including Pat Shermer, even though they lost, have been the teams that have been willing to, to actually throw the ball on first down with play actions and movements, and when they did run, run to the edge. You know, don't, if you run straight ahead against us, and that's what Tennessee tends to do, I mean, you're not going anywhere. You just those two guys inside are going to smack you. You got to go on the edges, uh, but you got to do a lot of quick rhythm. Uh, you know, a lot of that play action. The bootlegs uh, exposed us Sunday. Uh, screens, things like that. You got to, you got to, you got to hit it, hit those zones and run with them when we're in very predictable defense. Um, and I would think if Gabbard is the quarterback, that's more the game you're going to see. So Rick Ventura, he's on the Edge Moore Automotive Group Potline. He's brought to you by the District Tap on this Christmas Eve, and happy holidays to everybody. i got to ask you this. As a former coach and watching this, and I know Frank Wright mentioned that he threw the red flag last week of challenge, knowing that it was unchallengeable just because he wanted to hear the answer, right? Um, I thought he did that again yesterday, too, with uh, that, that fumble that uh, a lot of Colts fans thought was, and Darius Leonard picked up, and he threw the challenge flag on. I believe it was that play, right? Yeah, um, well, yeah, yeah, and that's a, that's a potential game changer if you get that. Yeah. I mean, I thought the only, I, I Do thought you think he was, actually – he knew that you couldn't be challenged. He just threw it to throw it, right? Yeah, I, I think, you know, whether or not he really realized it or not, right. whether, it, whether it was defined – see, upstairs, you know, whether that's defined as down by the ground or down by, um, down by forward progress, that's two different things. And so, you know – but again, again, that's a game changer. So I see throwing it. I think he made one mistake. Was that we, not challenging the spot? Oh God! Oh yeah, yeah. I'd we, agree with you on that. We yeah. live, we live to tell the tale. Yeah. And you know, personally, I didn't think I didn't think he made it on television, much less if I'm in the box. Yeah. And that's my responsibility. I, you know, and I don't I don't necessarily bring Frank because Frank's not really in position to see it. He's got to have people giving him input. And I think, you know, that was uh, that was a mistake. And if you were watching it on TV. What's his name? Sessator, the the really yep. good, yep. yeah, the basketball. And I've always really, really liked him. And you know, he's he's spot on all the time. And he said, you know, he, he really should have cha- he should have challenged it. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing for that. I just, I I just wonder. Let's logically, what what would be? Why would you throw a challenge flag full well knowing that it's an unchallengeable? Because I mean, they stop play, they come over. Hey, you can't challenge that. What? Well, what? he may not when he threw it. He may not. They may not have been totally clear on Might that. Be right. Yeah. You know. You know. I'm saying. You know because. There is a difference if you say if you say he he was down or forward progress. There's yeah. a, there's a difference. I got you. All right, Rick Venturi is with us. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back. We're going to put you on hold and we'll talk about again coming up next week and maybe what the Texans are doing right now and some of these other options because yeah. this is going to be one hell of a crazy weekend. <laughs> no. One hell of a crazy weekend coming up. All right, we'll put Rick on hold. Come back for a final time again. Merry Christmas to you. The Christmas Eve edition of the Ride with JMV here and uh, Rick is always brought to you by the District Tap on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Remember, there's never a bad time of year to get yourself the best water, and that is 
is Connecticut Water. The two in the area locations with John, Joe, and Dennis making sure with the Premier Series Water Softener and the in-home drinking water station that your life is completely changed by the greatness in water that you now have. The two in the area locations, Northeast Side in Castleton, South Side US 31, and Southport Road. And for my guys online, and happy holidays from Connecticut. It's ConnecticutIndy.com right now. Back with us on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Merry Christmas to you. Rick Venturi joins us here. Uh, brought to you by District Tap. All right, let's see some of these scenarios. We know about the win and your end situation on Sunday, but, I mean, things are going to go haywire in this Week 17, and then who uh, the Colts, let's just say hypothetically, end up matched up against in the playoffs. Well, there's no question about it. Our Monday night show, you're going to be pressing me on that one because, you know, I have, you know I'm one, as you know this, I mean, I probably have five films uh, broken down on a team before they play their last Sunday. So, you know, by the time I get to you, I'm just all I'm doing is filtering one game in there, and I'm totally ready at five o'clock on on Monday, um, and I have my templates and everything ready to go. But um, you know, the winning in is easy, and in reality, if you're the sixth seed, you know you have some options, but it's not really that difficult if you, you know. But now the the craziness is if in fact we win, let's say we win, and then Houston loses and we win the division. You know, then you go in, then you go in as the four seed, which is totally different. Now you end up playing San Diego or you play Kansas City. So it's just now all of a sudden it's just really, really a crapshoot. And, um, <laughs> I don't, you know, it's just absolutely amazing to me. Um, like I said, I'll be scrambling around on Monday because I, there, I, there's no way I can watch every single team this week in the detail I do it on. I'm telling you, that Jacksonville, you saw them yesterday. They go to Houston, and the way that Houston has – and they really – let's face it. I mean, they really haven't been that great. They, they have been – there's been so That's much right. more good fortune than really good football team there. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you know, when you when you look at it, you know, and, and I've been in this situation. I, you're, it's, you're too probably young to remember it, but I think it was 88. Um, all we had to do was win in New Orleans, and we're in. And in those days, the Saints were bad. They were out of it. Yep. And we got massacred on New Year's Eve in a game that meant nothing to them by a backup quarterback, John Forcade. These things are impossible to predict, and they're real dangerous. I, I think a real dangerous game is the Ravens because, you know, Cleveland is that team that is just playing their tail off, and they just want to finish great, but they don't have any pressure. So there's nothing, you know, they have to worry about. So I think the Ravens are a little bit in jeopardy. I, You know, the Jaguars, we know that they're good enough on defense on a given Sunday. We learned that ourselves, you know. Uh, Patriots should win. I, I, you know, the Jets. They're. I don't think they're going to beat them in Foxborough. Um, you know, then you got the. You know, you got the Chargers at the Broncos. You got the Raiders at KC. Um, you know, the, the Raiders shouldn't beat KC. Uh, Chargers at Broncos. You never know. I mean, you, you know, you you never know. Broncos still have a lot of talent on that team. So, yeah, there's so many crazy things. Uh, isn't it amazing that uh, I think the craziest thing of all that nobody ever thought in their wildest dreams, I, I even heard R- Rake and those guys kind of sign off on the last time they'll ever be together on that pregame. <laughs> <laughs> I, tur- on a, I turned around on a, and I'm yeah. going like, you know what, boys, you may have a home game very, very easily. I'm telling you, there, there could, some, something weird could really, really well, work out you, here. you got to do your job in Tennessee. I mean, it's yeah. all down to that. But you think that, you know, that Houston couldn't get beat by the Jags, particularly like you say. They have not, and I said that when we played them, they, this was a team that was on a wing and a prayer almost every single week. And you know what? It, it's, that's how the whole league is, really. I tell you what, Rick, and my Merry Christmas to everybody in ending this, that I'm not even going to bring up the fact that you would be riding in first place right now if you went for the tie back in September. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I will. We'll, we'll, we'll let that go. But, it, yeah, but I, one thing about us is we were not crickets at the no, time. Dude. A no. lot of crickets. A lot of guys back there say, hey, I remember guys saying, you know, this, this, is, this is not our year. We're not a playoff team. Uh, more important to get a locker room culture. 
And remember what I said to you. There is no game that has that context. You either make the right decision or you don't. And you, locker room <laughs> culture is, I think, built by virtue of winning games. It and, is. And it is. More than anything. So. <laughs> it's the most overrated thing in the world. But anyway. <laughs> you are. I will leave everybody with that as their Christmas gift right now, too. From us to you. Hey, you are awesome. You and the fam have a great Christmas. And then we'll double back. And I'll talk at you coming up on Sunday, certainly. And, uh. We'll see what happens in the pregame and then catch it next Monday with what whoever knows what we're going to be talking about then. But it should be – it's one hell of a ride, and it's better than a four-win season. So. Yeah, and Merry Christmas to you and Tony and the whole city. I'm look, really looking forward to Sunday night. You're awesome, Rick. Thank you. All right, man. Take it easy. Rick Venturi on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Potline. Always awesome. Uh, from the bottom of our heart here, Tony, myself, have a very Merry Christmas. Enjoy it, not only later on tonight on Christmas Eve, but certainly coming up tomorrow on Christmas Day. We will be back in here on Wednesday at 3, ready to rock just for you, as we always are. You can always count on us because Tony and I will always be here. But we love having you as listeners. We love having you as friends. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everybody. From Tony and I, FM 107.5 and 1070 The Fan. Colts Roundtable Live is next.